she will uh, share about her insight about the uh, NFT valuation. Hello, everyone. Hi, Alex. Can you all hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can hear you. I can see your, your slide very well. Okay. Okay, perfect. Um, so today I'm here to speak about NFT valuation. So I'm going to explain to you the three different methods of valuations that we use in our company when clients approach us to try to get like an independent opinion on NFT um, value. Um, so you see like any asset class, whether you try to value like a company, whether you try to value a piece of art, whether you try to value like a wine cellar, there's no shortcut to it. It requires hard work. And I'm going, I've tried to summarize this. So I'm going to try to keep my speech short um, as I always do, Alex. <laughs> so anyway, here we are. So there are three different methods that we use to value an NFT. The first one is an asset approach. The second one is an income approach. And the third one is a market approach. So what does this mean? Okay, let's start with asset approach. So whether you look at traditional or digital art or collectibles, the value of any visual artwork or collectibles is considered very subjective. Even right after transacting one of these, it's very difficult to clearly determine a marked um, to market value because it's there's limited liquidity. The opportunities for resale are always limited with these sorts of um, assets. Um, so what are the exit scenarios? They are difficult to predict. That's the reality of it. So the, the NFT marketplaces today are great. They are efficient. They are reliable. <coughs> and they do offer the option for bidders to place bids. Um, so this allows for some level of conversions to a very, very fragmented um, market, but it's only applicable assuming there are several bidders. So the size of the bidder's pool is one of the key elements to um, value any NFT using the asset approach. Now, another challenge we face with the asset approach is the lack of historical transactions or active order book activity which is inherent to any recent assets coming to the market. So that's the first approach that we use, which is very valuable, but I've tried to show you like the, the limitations of the approach. Now, the second approach we use is an income approach. So this is very suitable for music NFTs rather than visual NFTs, um, because it's it works with um, music royalties. So the income approach is more relevant for certain types of NFTs than others. So it's more relevant for NFTs that produce a regular income. It's not very relevant for the valuation of most digital artwork. That being said, some unique situations exist where the digital artwork itself can be licensed. So are there any licensing opportunities related to the NFT? That's one of the key questions. Um, is there any rental income? So I guess real estate NFTs could also fall under that category and be relevant for an income approach uh, valuation. Um, the income potential can be taken into consideration, and, but it mostly depends on the actions of the owner or the creator of the NFT. So the income derived is not necessarily inherent to the NFT or the work of art itself, and it's not passive in nature. It's very, very much related to the creator or the owner of the NFT. So returns in this situation would depend on the skill of the individual who actually owns the NFT. So income approach can be very relevant, but it has its limitations as well. Um, now let's look at the next method for valuing NFTs, which is the market approach. So the market approach is very valid and it takes into account a large number of factors. It takes into account comparables. So what is the average price of similar NFTs? What is the highest price of transactions of this 
um, NFT category, the lowest price, what's in the NFT metadata um, in terms of comparables, if it's a visual art NFT, um, does the artist has any historical sales, whether it's uh, in the physical world or in the NFT world? Um, is there a novelty fa factor? How many NFTs have been minted? What's the notoriety of the artist? What's the scale of the sale event? Was it, you know, promoted worldwide? Is it for a very happy few? Um, was there social media hype around the NFT? Um, does the NFT creator or owner have any partnership with NFT developers? I guess we all have in mind the example of Yuga Labs. Um, is there any partnership in place with any blockchain transfer agent or platform to promote it? And what's been the time to market? So the market approach is the, the one we use most of the time because this approach tends to make people feel safer and it applies to all categories of NFTs, whether it's collectible, art, linked to a physical asset, um, gaming, sports, etc., etc. So the market approach, I would say, is the one we, we've been using the most in the company. Now, <clears throat> backbone of valuation when it comes to NFT. Three extremely solid criteria that <coughs> we analyze in detail. Number one, rarity. Number two, utility. Number three, tangibility. So what, 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 do the, what do I mean when I say rarity? Well, how rare and hard to get is a specific NFT? Good examples of rarity are first of its kind artwork from a famous creator in the digital arts industry, or it can be an NFT created by a famous celebrity. We are all thinking of Madonna's NFTs, which were released just a few months ago. Uh, another factor of rarity is the effect such an NFT would provide in a video game, for example. Now, people are drawn to such NFTs because of their intrinsic value, where the owner of the NFT holds the blockchain proof of ownership. This gives a sense of distinction and determines the premium value of an NFT. Solid examples of the unique NFT effect in the crypto industries, I guess, are crypto kitties, the first crypto kitties, every day is the first 5,000 5, days by people, you know, and a few others like this. Now, the second key criteria, which one needs to look at when valuing an NFT is utility. Okay, what do I mean here? The utility of an NFT comes from its real application, either in physical or the digital world. For example, um, some NFTs are more than just collectibles. They can be used in games, like virtual lands, spells, or characters. This characteristic of NFTs gives them immediate value. This value can accrue over time, depending on the popularity of the underlying project or not. But as the community of a decentralized games player grows, more of them will be willing to pay top dollar for a unique card. So what are the examples here? Um, the Euro 2020 NFT tickets, Decentraland property, or collectible cards like Geralt or Rivia in the Witcher universe Gwen card game, for example. So <clears throat> that was the second criteria. Now, the third criteria to look at when valuing an NFT is tangibility. What do I mean here? Some NFTs are tethered to real world objects, which gives value in terms of tangibility backed up by um, ownership immutability. Anything that can be backed by an NFT to solidify ownership rights, but it doesn't make the object unique or in high demand. The underlying value of such an object will be determined by its practicality, scarcity, and the personal satisfaction it gives users. So for example, having an NFT ticket to an exclusive event full of celebrities is more valuable both intrinsically, intrinsically and on a personal level than owning an NFT tethered to a bottle cap. In terms of market practicality, these NFTs with tangible value are best suitable for short-term trading on the marketplace. After the event is over, the NFT value is a lot lower. 
it's because such NFTs may have expiry dates, tickets for events, obviously. But other collectibles like NFT tethered limited edition sneakers that you were mentioning earlier, Alex, they can accrue value over time as the number of items in circulation is going to diminish. So these are three solid criteria. Well, when it comes to rarity, we always look at the total market size. Now, just to take a step back and bring everybody back to what is the market size of NFTs today, about 3,200 NFTs are being transacted in the world every day. The market is still very small when it comes to number of transactions. Now, the total market value a year ago was over 10 billion US. Total market value today is about 3 billion US. Now, predictions is that within a year, it will go up back up to $13 billion. But anyway, that's just some of the hardcore figures we look at when valuating an NFT. Now I'm going to um, get to my closing thoughts. So the value of an NFT is going to involve both personal perception and market rules. It's a mix of both. It's very subjective because it really depends on what you care about and the exit scenarios that you have access to. So if I own an NFT issued by Yuga Lab, it's all great. But if I love it and I'm planning to keep it my whole life, then I'll never sell it. So the value is just what it's worth to me, but it doesn't have a market value, right? Even though I may have lots of bidders for it. So anyway, in order to um, get a proper valuation for an NFT in case you wish to invest or in case you, in case you want to borrow or loan money um, to make NFT investments, I would recommend have a, to have an independent agency um, do your NFT valuations for your company. So feel free to contact us if you need help on this. Thank you, Ali. Yeah, great insight. Yeah, because uh, yeah, value, you combine every valuation method and actually the best approach for the, depending on the characteristic of the NFT. So yeah, that's very important, like consulting some expert in the, in the some specific field like you to like uh, actually value your NFT to before you actually the marketize or the monetize it. Yeah. 